You wanted to play my game, didn't you? We don't have to wait for the swelling to go down. New ports are sometimes a bit tight. Wouldn't want to hurt you. Now relax and enjoy. Shit! I can't believe it! You blew my pod! You must have neural surged! I jacked you into my pod and you obviously panicked. Now it's totally fucked! Oh, no. It was just the wrong cable. Welcome to Kuvulu, the sorcery of copper. This episode will be about this little gadget, which is there to test micro USB cables. And for example, if I plug this micro USB cable, da -da -dum, I see that it is capable of transferring data. But if I plug this cable here, we see that it is not capable of transferring data, but instead it is therefore charging. But before that, we have to talk about a dark time. A time where each device had its own dedicated port. Where the battle for configuration cost the life of many brave soldiers. And then, the promised hero came to free us from this oppression. His name was USB. In the beginning it was quite easy, there was only one USB cable, this one. On one side you had this flat connector which is called type A and it is flat so you can stack multiple apps in a little space. And this goes to the computer. And by the way, if you're wondering the side, here, look at the logo. The logo always goes at the top and this is how you put it in the computer or how it's called in the USB specification, the host. And then on the other side, you had the type B connector, which is square, so you couldn't mix them with the type A connector for the host. And you connect again the type B connector in the device with the logo on the top. The problem with the type B is just it's too large. For printers and large devices, it's not a problem to have such a huge connector. But if you start having smaller devices because everything went smaller, this is just too large. You cannot waste so much space just to have one connector with such a little device. And this is why they created the Mini B connector, which is a lot smaller than the Type B. And it is even smaller than the Type A. And like the B connector, the logo goes on top. And now we finally have a connector which is suited for smaller devices. They reuse the same mechanism as for the Type A, like the retention clips in the receptacle, as well as the spring contacts. The problem is that they are a lot smaller, and thus, also less durable. And if they break, you have no choice but throw away the device. And having an expensive camera with a flimsy connector is far from ideal. But these flaws have been fixed with type Micro B, which is even smaller than Mini B. This makes it ideal for thin smartphones. Now there are hooks on the plug instead of on the receptacle. And the spring contacts are also in the plug. So if they wear out, you just throw away the cable and not the device. But now there is also no right orientation anymore. The manufacturers just do as it pleases them. And micro USB has become very popular. You can use it to communicate and power the device at the same time, or just power the device, or just transfer sometimes some data, but mainly charge the device, or just charge the device. You find micro USB absolutely everywhere. And this is how it should look like inside a USB cable at least according to the standard. You have a braided shield on the outside, then you have a second aluminum foil sheet just behind the braided shield, then you have two wires for power, black is for ground, red is for V-bus, so five volts, and then you have two data wires, green and white. And because they're differential, these two wires are twisted together. But when you sell a device and you only need power to charge it, you can still use USB because it is very widespread and it can deliver power. But 
you also have to provide a USB cable in case the user doesn't have one. But you don't want to provide one of these fancy USB cable with two data lines, which you don't use because you only need power, and shielding for data integrity because it costs a lot of money. What you provide is just a cheap USB cable with just two lines to transfer power, nothing else. Problem is that you can figure out just by looking at the cable what's really inside. You can guess it by using a known working device. And if you plug it in, you can see is it only charging or is it also detected by the computer. But when you are developing a device, then you don't know is it because of a bug in the firmware or is it because of the cable. And because I spent way too much time debugging this issue, I decided to build a gadget which takes care of it for me. Here comes the micro USB cable tester. But there is no real magic behind it. It's just a battery, two connectors, a couple of LEDs and resistors, and it simply checks for the presence of the wire in the cable. To use it, just plug both ends of the USB cable and check which LEDs light up. If the power LED lights up, it means that the cable has the ground and the VBUS wires inside, and you can use the cable to power devices at least. If the data lights up, it means that at least there is one data wire, so probably the other is also there, and you can use the cable to do some data transfer. And finally, the shield ID indicates if the cable is shielded. And if it is shielded, you can use it for high-speed data transfer. And this is how a proper USB cable should look like with these three lights on. If we connect this cable, we see that it has the data wires, but it doesn't have a shield. It means that this is a crappy cable and you shouldn't use it for data transfer, at least not for high speed. And this cable here doesn't even have the data wires, so you can only use it to power a device or to charge it. Now, more and more with battery-operated devices, you will find these kinds of cable, where the power and the battery charging LEDs are on. These kinds of cable is heresy. Normally, you should only draw up to 500 milliamps on a USB port. But because USB is now used to charge and power everything, they kind of amended the specification with a battery charging capability. There, the charger tells the device that it can deliver more than 500 milliamps. And it does that by shorting the data plus and data minus lines. But because these two wires don't exist in the cable anymore, while well, the manufacturer decided to short it within the plug, completely ignoring the capabilities of the port it is connected to. And finally, just because I could, I've added an on-the-go check. This is for adapters mainly, and they simply connect the ID pin to ground, and when you plug it into your phone, it tells it to act as a host. So now you can connect a USB device onto your phone, something like a memory stick. And once I've identified the cable, I mark it. So next time I know exactly what is inside. For example, S stands for shielded, so data transfer with shield. These are the good cables. D stands for data only without shield, bad cable. P just for power and C for power with battery charging. And if you also want such a crucial time-saving gadget, you can re-implement it using the source schematic, build it yourself using the board layout, or just get one of my leftovers. This tester is only for USB 2, type A to type micro B cables though, because this is where you find most deceiving cables. But there is USB 3 and other types. This offers a plethora of combinations. We are now far from the original idea of one cable for all devices, and USB C is even more devilish. But this will be for another video. Until then, enjoy!